Hello students, welcome to Diadme IS. I'm Zeba, I'm your faculty for management at Diadme IS. For today's session, we are going to take the subject module from paper two, that is strategic cost management. It is basically called strategic management, uh, but for the UPSC aspirants, it, they term it as uh, strategic cost management, right? So it comes from a paper too. Uh, for today's session, we are going to be taking uh, and we are going to be understanding the strategic analysis of the tool, right, that are there. If you go by the previous years, right, from the last three years paper that I'm going to show you now, you can see that a specific question was asked. And as you can see from the year 2022, the question that was asked was, so now let's go by the previous year papers to understand that why this topic is very, very much relevant during your UPSC preparation. And honestly, it's a very securing uh, marks kind of a question that is asked by UPSC. The question is basically very, very much in um, like con in, in the con context of the syllabus that you have studied. If you see your UPSC uh, strategic cost management syllabus as well, you can see there, there is a direct mention of the experience curve, the BCG uh, matrix, and the GEC model, right? So let's just go ahead for today's session and, and understand in general that what are these terms and like what is basically strategy when it comes to an organization. So uh, as you can see all on your screen, I have first included the paper uh, for the session to, uh, 2022. It was asked in the previous year, right? The question was, briefly discuss the meaning of BCG matrix, GEC model, turnaround strategy. So if you would, would be reading the current affairs, you can very much relate to the models of the strategic planning that any organization does. And you can actually relate it to the models or the different strategic tools that I'm going to teach you. When such a question comes, I will also let you know that at the end of the today's session that how the answer writing part has to be maintained. So that if suppose, let's say it's a 15 marker question, or if it, let's say it's a 10 marker question, you can secure almost like good marks in that. So in 2022, this question was asked. For the year 2021, similar question was asked, but here the directly only about BCG matrix was asked. So it stated that how does G BCG matrix helps in portfolio planning? I'm going to explain to you that what is portfolio planning, what actually is the advantages and what is the disadvantages or the limitation of the portfolio analysis. Then subsequently in the year 2018, a question was asked. So they included a brief data for um, like five basic products. And they asked the students that the company is evaluating the different division in its portfolio and would like to consider the BCG matrix, the GE McKenzie framework to decide on which these divisions to focus its resources and which of the divisions to diverse giving reasons why. So you had to read this uh, entire factual data and you had to come up with uh, the choice that amongst the which model is more preferable. But that comparison can only be done. So such a question can only be attempted once you have a good hold of the understanding of the basic difference or the concept within all these uh, basic tools, right? So let me just start today's session. Okay, so when, so basically, if you begin to understand that as a student of management, that what is strategic management and why it is say, taken into so much consideration by any business organization. That is because of a fact that any business organization or any entrepreneur cannot just, you know, haphazardly uh, introduce any product into the market. They have to be very, very careful. They have to analyze all the parameters. They have to take into consideration the stakeholders, how the cash flow is going to be happening, what is the current market uh, environment, what is the current, uh, you know, customer uh, satisfaction. Uh, 
aspect so everything has to be in consideration so it cannot be just like uh, you know to just introduce a product without analyzing so if for a very calculative move that ha that because everything is at stake in such a scenario so any business uh, you know owner does what is they have to do the strategic portfolio analysis and when i talk about strategic portfolio analysis student it includes the identification and the evaluation of all the products or the services offered by the company on the market and preparing specific strategies for every group according to its relevant share and actual projected sales growth rate so what is the expected um, roi right so all those factor takes place the all the decision making everything is considered in the portfolio uh, analysis portfolio analysis is a strat in, in strat strategic management allows the answer key to the questions to shape the present and the future because it is a long term vision right so when it is a long term vision in any organization has to be very very calculative it has to consider the present scenario as well as the what are the future expectancy and how the entire environment around the product is going to change so since every uh, for a single entity let's say there are n number of products available in the market so what is the niche that your product is being bringing and even if there are a risk of failure or any kind of unexpected scenario that occurs in future what is going to be then the change of strategy or the turn around aspect so that is how the portfolio analysis is done i hope you have understood the concept of strategic portfolio analysis for any organization right moving on now to begin with the portfolio analysis as i have just discussed with you i'm going to begin for your today's session with the first tool that many organizations uses and it dates back to 1970 that is called the bcg matrix so it is again a strategic analysis tool that was introduced by the famous company boston consultancy group and it traces back to that scenario where a organization was considered in aspect of or the different products any organization is launching was considered in the aspect of two parameters that was first was the target market growth or we simply call it as market growth and the second was the relative market share and in accordance to that four quadrants were considered i'll be showing you the diagram in the next slide just try to understand that what it was it was basically to understand that what is going to be the portfolio for the product that is launched by a business organization because many times what happens is uh, one single business organization introduces n number of products so there has to be like a very understandable way of adjusting different products as per the consider to considering the current scenario or where that product is standing right now and what is the expectancy of that product in future a company cannot waste its time just being relying on the product which is not giving any of the uh, you know positive result so for for such products are to be scrapped from the market completely so in consideration to that for this particular bcg matrix four quadrants are considered in accordance to the two parameters that i have just told you one is relative market share and the market growth right the four quadrants or the four aspects for this particular matrix are stars cash cows question marks and dogs i'll explain it to you once by one once this will become more clear to you when we'll go to the diagram just and and just see this diagram right now this is the bcg matrix as you can all see on your screen so for the vertical aspect or for the y axis market growth is taken and for the x axis the market share is taken so this is basically from positive to negative or from high to low and from here it is from negative to positive so from low to high right how they are the four quadrants or the four aspects are considered first is the star then you have cash flow then you have question mark then you have dogs so dogs is the stage where the product is almost coming out of the market and now its visibility is going to end 
in or the uh, the availability of the product is such that it is not creating any kind of a buzz in terms of its uh, um, sales or anything in that consideration so this is basically the uh, i would say the most uh, considerable uh, stage of any product where there is no market growth and there is absolutely no market share right so the star is basically that scenario where the product is effectively doing very well so the market growth is also quite positive the market share is quite also uh, positive so in that case the product is taken into the star consideration of quadrant cash cow is basically a neutral uh, as uh, i would say neutral stage for any product here the market growth is not that much but the market share is quite effective right then comes the question mark question mark is a stage which is in consideration of the fact that what is now is it is basically like the turning point if i can put it in a simple word it's like the turning point what happens here is in this question mark quadrant the market growth is positive but the market share is considerably negative so what happens either from here from the question mark stage the product is either going to go to the star quadrant right or it is going to go to the cash flow so depending upon n number of parameters that are taken into consideration by any organization the decision making part decides or the different strategic um, aspects decide whether from question mark stage it is going to go to the star stage that that means it's going to um, become worth of more value in terms of sales in terms of market reputation and everything or it is going to go to the cash flow which we already discussed it's basically like a neutral stage right it is neither having an absolute great performance in terms of all the profit making fine let me go back to the previous slide now just understand the four quadrant star so star as we discussed student star is basically the stage where there is strong market where there is strong market penetration and there is strong growth okay let's go back again to the diagram again star where there is positive market growth and where there is positive market share everything is going absolutely smooth for this particular phase now the cash flow that we just discussed which comes just below the star uh, quadrant that says that in cash cow quadrant there is strong penetration of market share like as you can also relate it to the diagram but there is low growth of the market the market growth is considerably less right so here we stand in cash flow sorry cash cows okay for question mark stage this as just i mentioned it to you it is basically the stage which is the turning point it might go to the star stage or it might go to the cash cow stage so in the question mark quadrant if any product has uh, been there so there the market penetration is low uh, but the growth in the market is consider considerably high let's go back to the diagram again right so market growth is high good but the market share is less okay coming back dogs like i just told you there is again low penetration of market there is absolutely low market share and there is absolutely low market growth so it is basically the stage where the product is now just going to be invisible from the market there is absolutely no going it's not making any uh, you know it's not get, giving any uh, return of investment to end the entrepreneur or the business organization and it is also not maintaining its value in terms of the competitive market so it is basically the stage when the product is just on the i would say on the brink of being not available anymore in the market right so this is what is all about bcg matrix so as you can see here the parameters are less the quadrants or the aspect of consideration are also less so and it dates back to 1970 since 1970 till 2023 students a lot of you know uh, 
environment in terms of business models, business organization, approach of marketing, everything has been changed. There was no digital world at that point in time, now it is. So it dates back, although yes, it is very strongly evident and very ha still ha holding that value, but many times companies consider it as a very traditional uh, tool for strategic portfolio analysis. Let's see further about it to understand it more. So when to use a BCG matrix? You would be asking me, ma'am, that when, when do a business organization basically use it? They still use it. Of course, it is a very, uh, it still holds that value. Because let's say, the, although it is quite, it dates back to uh, quite back number of years, but still the authenticity or the integral part of including it for the right amount of analysis that it provides is still there. So BCG matrix should be used as a part of strategic portfolio management to manage cash flows. It was actually taken by McDonald's in 1999. The matrix enables you to determine which assets could produce future revenues and market investment decisions that ensure funds are allocated to the right assets. A company cannot waste its time or in context of other resources as well. So everything has to be very, very analytical, very, very strategic, very, very to the point. So in, instead of wasting the time on the irrelevant assets, right? a business organization has to be very, very effective in, uh, in terms of the product they are launching. So BCG matrix is basically can be used there. The tool can reveal portfolio weakness for sure. The, the weakness gets reflected here that may threaten the company's future cash flow. So in consideration of the future and what is going to be the long-term vision, where the company is going to stand, let's say in the next one year, two year, five years, the company decides using the BCG matrix. If a company is not developing and the product is going again and again to the question mark stage, like I've just told you, it needs to consider where income will com come from in future. Of course, it's the dog stage, it is out of the market. But when it, the product is again and again going to that question mark stage. So here, it, if a company is not developing many question marks, the, com the product is not going into that, I'd, just I mentioned the turning point of the product where it is going to, be the, going to be the star or going to be the cash cow. So in that case, it needs to be considered where income will come from in future. Right, the future aspect of where the income is going to be generated has to be taken into consideration. So a BCG matrix cannot be just used all alone. There has to be used any other tool. So there are several tools for the most popular is the SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threat that is taken into consideration. Along with the BCG matrix, many organizations adopt SWOT analysis also. So in addition, other criteria can also be incorporated and placing a product between the two uh, categories of the matrix as it may evolve according to the supply and demand. So any product can be even considered in two particular quadra quadrants depending upon what is the supply and demand stage of that product is going on. So let me just introduce you a case study for the BCG matrix. I've included this example because Basically, this is a, ma of course, management as in, in context of answer writing students, you have to be very much al aligning all your answers to the real world. Because there is no anything in, oh, yes, the, the facts that you are learning or the, uh, the kind of questions that you are attempting are very, very factual. But you cannot just take the future factual aspect into consideration. It comes, it has to be very much in alignment to the real world. And since you are very well versed with the kind of social media or the uh, different platforms, especially the YouTube, you know, you would be right now be reading a lot about the different, different kind of uh, algorithm techniques and all those things that are happening with the social media world. So this is one of the most beautiful case study that I can include here. I think that would this, would this would actually give you a more better idea to understand what is basically BCG matrix. Let me just make you understand the diagram, then we'll go to the what is the written part here. Let's just see here what it is. So for the BCG matrix of Google, al already you know that the two parameters that you consider are market growth and the market share. The 
ha the positive then from the positive it goes to negative and from negative it goes to the positive you are clear about that now youtube is basically the star comes in the star quadrant here why because youtube every day is generating like it is uh, uploading a, a very a number of videos throughout the day throughout the year right so and the kind of revenue youtube is generating so that is definitely the star product it has a good market growth and it has absolutely good market share the right now if in the current scenario there is none who can actually beat the concept of youtube working it is basically a household name right now right so if you move from the star product that is a youtube i come to the another uh, you know quadrant here of cash flow cash sorry cash cow so in con consideration of the cash cow there is google search people in context of the kind of smartphones or the devices they are using most popularly mo most popularly everybody is using um, google search and definitely in your preparations also this is something that you definitely use but it depends upon the kind of device you are using so it would not be just be considered as the absolute uh, having the good market growth and good market share no it is basically uh, in competition with others with other search engines as well so it is definitely having a good market share but the market growth is not that much right so it definitely comes to the cash cow then for the question mark uh, the questions quadrant there we have the google drive so to store all the documents all the files all the in data and information you have google drive so now google drive is basically in the question mark stage here the definitely it is an aspect of store for the gmail account you have but many people don't ha use google drive so, you know there is a cl cloud storage available so people are in, in 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 the kind of upgradation that is happening in the market it is basically in context of that it would either go to the star stage if it is not uh, by by the google if it is not updated to that uh, uh, i would say the current expect expectancy for this product or it would either go to the cash cow stage so here it is the turn around point for the google drive right so it can either go from here to this stage or it might even go to the cash cow stage right so i hope you have understood the question marks then for the dogs um, quadrant that we have in the bcg matrix we have google play so earlier google play was introduced uh, so there was no youtube at that point in time so google play was basically used and right now to watch videos people are as i told you using youtube for sure so this basically product is coming out of the uh, scene and going almost it is becoming not too relevant right now many people even don't know that there is a something called as google uh, you know videos that concept was there in the year 2005 so it dates back to those those times so definitely it is a uh, considered to be a failure to be precise right so let's just understand this what i have uh, written in in context of the theory as well so star is basically the youtube here right youtube is a flagship product that you already know that did you know that it has uh, definitely it has it is uploading 500 you know kind of videos every minute so the growth and expansion is definitely turning new skies every time the cash cow there is google search in google ads the marketing right now the entire world of marketing is going to the google search and google ads so definitely it is almost that 70% of the world population is using it so definitely it's go it is in the cash cow stage it would eventually be depending upon the kind of um, uh, you know approach google is using it would elevate to that level so for question mark as i discussed there is drive and docs we have google drive is one of the best example for the question mark stage the demand for data data storage is there and but since i already told you there is a tough competition from the cloud computing coming up and the ais so definitely it's a question of concern so the question mark stage then we have dogs where i have already included the google play right this product was not a total failure but in gradually since youtube is the major player so google uh, videos or uh, google play videos are going out of the market in in terms of its revenue generation right 
So I hope you have understood this diagram. Please take this into consideration. And whenever you are studying any topic from current affairs right now also, make sure as a management optional student, you are taking that aspect into consideration of the kind of BCG matrix that would be created in context of that organization, right? So that's about the BCG matrix. Let me also tell you that how BCG matrix or how, what are the steps of designing a BCG matrix? So how to make the strategies for the BCG matrix, using the strategic BCG matrix? The first st stage here is to first of all choose the product, the business, strategic business unit or the basic product or the that is we are going to be considering in context of its portfolio analysis, right? So the segments here are f in, in context of that what is the, the product that you are launching, what is the brand value that you are expecting it. So that's the first thing that you have to do, you have to choose the product. Any organization also started starts the BCG matrix with this first major step. Then you have to identify define the market, where this product is going to go, what is the current market like in, in accordance to the kind of uh, you know, environment that you are launching it in. So you have to define the market and be very clear in context of the business portfolio position, right? Once you have identified, you've even defined the market where this your product is going to be launched or it's going to be available to the customers, then comes step three, which is calculating relative market share. You have to, so how relative market share is uh, taken into consideration, it is basically refers to the total market share served by a company measured either in unit or volume or revenue, right? What is going to be, what, what, how much market share are you going to be holding on in context of the volume or the revenues, right? So relative market share is used in this particular matrix to compare the product sales with the sales of the major competitors. Definitely before any organization is launching a product, there would be n number of other companies which would be selling the same product. So you have, as a business organization or as an entrepreneur, you have to be very strategical in context of the, how much even your competitor, the kind of market share your competitors are also holding. So you have to then compare those things and you have to be calculating your relative market share. Then we have the identifying the market growth rate. So this is the fourth step where you have to identify the industry's growth rate from sources available online. So you have to do a lot of research, you have to do a lot of research, R&D, to put, put it straight. It can be calculated by identifying the average revenue growth of leading companies. So you have to take all the lead, leading companies and you have to identify that what is, how the market growth rate is actually happening in comparison to all the different, um, I would say the good brands that are selling. Let's say, any company is selling, uh, let's say Amul in India. So when Amul is launching any product, there are other uh, dairy product companies also that are coming up. So just uh, like, like the country farm uh, milk right now that is happening. So already there are some key players like Amul, Mother Dairy, right? So all these are already there. So just the country delight milk and everything, those products cannot just launch themselves in the market. They have to create a certain strategy in context of the market growth rate that they are expecting in comparison also to the competitors, who, which are the big players, right? Then you have to draw the marks on the matrix. After all the calculations, everything that has been done, you have to now map the brand for your matrix, right? There are, you, there are several online tools that you can use and you can design your own BCG matrix, right? The competitive advantage of the online tool is that you can use colors, stickers, and images, of course, that is, that comes up to that kind of uh, the, the level of depth. But you have to just understand that there are five major steps that are considered for any business organization to draw a BCG matrix for the product that they are launching, right? So BCG matrix, there are advantages for sure. Let's discuss those advantages. It is basically simple to implement and it is easy to understand. This is something right, right now I have just taught you. For you now as a management uh, student, even if you have never studied about it, you have a good idea about the fact that, okay, what BCG matrix is, how is the diagram, how the uh, four quadrants, how is the product uh, you know, placed in consideration to that. So it is simple and it is easy to understand. 
then large companies can use it for the seeking the large volume and experience effort like i already told you it has been being it was designed in the year 1970 so if it's still holding certain value and it is still holding a i would say the aspect of consideration so definitely it is worth so many large companies can even use it for the for finding out the volume and the experience effect that the product is going to be having right it predicts the future actions of a company that we have already the future course of action what are going to be the future environment and everything it helps the company to decide its proper management strategies since all the resources are limited there is there is a kind of environment also uh, which is you know unpredictable so to make the company stand its value and hold on its grip in the entire competitive world the it helps the company to decide what is going to be the proper a very good strategic analysis right the disadvantage or the limitations for bcg matrix are definitely going to be there if there are pros there definitely is going to be the cons bcg matrix classifies business just as low or high either performance is good or the performance is poor there is nothing in between but that is not actually the case to take the real life world where there are several business organization it is basically different business organization are also running at a medium pace level so we have to so bcg matrix does not take in that into consideration thus the nature of the business may not be reflected actually right then the second point here is the distinction between high low is highly subjective so how would you decide that it is going to go to the like it is the two extremes are considered positives or negative so definitely it comes to be very subjective right it the, the outline of the consideration of good market growth or good market share or low market growth market share is taken but then it is just very subjective the use of bcg analysis cannot help managers take into account synergies that may possibly exist among the various strategic business units within the product portfolio so there is, there is a basically a cooperation of several other aspects also to be considered for the product so that is not ta taken here into consideration so definitely for a manager to just be dependent on a bcg matrix to do the portfolio analysis for a product is not more, like not completely worth it or sufficient right so with this we come to the end of the bcg matrix let's move on to the gec model and then you will be able to compare the two right so when i talk about gec model students please consider this fact that gec model is basically much more prominent and much more effective if you compare the two models because why because here the details or the parameters considered here are very much very much more there are nine basic it is also known as the traffic light model we are going to understand that later on so there are nine aspect of uh, uh, parameters considered for the for, for to say the number of quadrant definitely the two parameters here are market, market attractiveness and the business strength but that it just those two parameters are consider in aspect of eight different uh, nine different quadrants so definitely the gist of the details or the depth of understanding here and the kind of positive decision making that comes from using a gc model is much much more in comparison to the bcg matrix that we did from the boston consultancy group right so basically what happened was ge matrix is extensively used to appraise the competitive scenarios so for n number of products having n number of uh, competitions in the market so gc model is basically in consideration to that g matrix is a viable tool that assist managers to develop organizational strategy that is based mainly on the market attractiveness and the business strength so basically it, it was introduced by the company popularly uh, known as mckenzy right so it in consult uh, general electrical um, motors in 1970 uh, you know they along with the mckenzy company developed a nine cell portfolio matrix 
and here it was the large portfolio of strategic business units right the nine box matrix is a strategy device that offers a systematic approach for the multi business corporations to prioritize its investment among its business so since investment is very very essential and it is the key player for any product longevity right the the life cycle of any product is de de definitely defined on the lines of the kind of investment a company or an organization is ready to make right so gec mat model comes into that consideration so many business uh, organizations mncs have preferred gec model when it comes to the strategic uh, portfolio analysis let's go further and see the diagram of it i think then you will be able to understand it in better so this is basically the diagram for the gec model here the two parameters consider are as i told you for the vertical axis there is industry attractiveness and for the horizontal parameter we have business unit strength or we simply called it business strength here they have even introduced the medium uh, nature of the expectancy it's not just the low than the business nature of working in the low market attractive uh, industry situation or the high industry att uh, attractive situation or in concentration of the business strength they've even included the level of medium here so you can the general business or the real world based business can be considered in this particular gec model right so i uh, like i just told you the nine quadrants or the nine cells are considered here let me go back to the theory and then we are going to come and understand this okay so it is a structure that assess business portfolios deliver future strategic implications and helps to prioritize the investment you have to be like very analytical in context of where you are investing the money where the cash flow is going right so every business organization has to prioritize the aspect of investment right this matrix was intended to overcome the underperformance that companies were encountering with the bcg matrix definitely i told you earlier also bcg matrix was not giving the absolute result so there were flaws all there which were coming out and being reflected at the later stage so business organizations took a hold in aspect of just using the bcg matrix they had they needed something which was much more precise and much more detailed so that you know even if the analysis part or the portfolio planning is done later on they don't regret it so b e c model was helping a lot in that so it became popular and this portfolio model enables the business product to be analyzed in terms of dimensions of value to the organization right value to the organization means the industry attractiveness and the dimensions of value to the customer you have to consider the customers also here so that came, came on the aspect of the business strength what is the strength so when i talk about the business strength how much customer uh, value it is holding right so a g mckenzie or a attractiveness strength matrix is significant primarily to assign priorities of for investment in the various business of the firm please remember that right the priorities for like i just told you business organizations are having n number of products so how they are going to prioritize the investment depending upon several aspect is taken into consideration by the gec model let's just understand the two parameters that we've just read industry attractiveness and the business strength let's understand what is the basic difference between the two right so industry or the market attractiveness the attractiveness of a market is established so before i read that um, what, what when as a customer let's say you are an upsc aspirant or you go to buy any particular product for your daily uh, usage so there is a certain hold of you understanding that there are certain products which hold a very significant value even in context of the kind of marketing they have done or the kind of background they have must have hold it is help the it market attractiveness makes you understand that how advantageous it is for any company and to compete in this market for so if i would say in in context of the value that it is bringing to the market right the the kind of strength it is holding 
so it is based on the numerous factors such as the what is the size of the market where it is which is which it is targeting and at which rate it is growing what has been the previous patterns how the branding value has been created right so for for, for a, let's any product let's say any um, product that has we have been using since coca cola right coca cola is the best example in context of the market attractiveness that attractions it has been holding coca cola has been uh, since world war 2 so since th that particular din and age till here where we have come to everything you know post covid the, the scenarios of health aspect is still very much considered but coca cola is one of the major even if even if it has gone through several ups and downs in context of the in india in in our own home home country coca cola had you know been um, considered for several several uh, uh, i would say unethical uh, behavioral so still the market attractiveness for this particular product is very much dominant right so it is based on numerous factors what is the size of the market and the rate at which it is growing the possibility of the profit the number of competitors within the industry and their weakness there have been several soda brands that have come up but for companies like coca cola they are very much still very popular right there are numerous factors which help to govern the attractiveness such as industry size the size of the industries how it has placed itself in the world market what is the market port uh, profitability what are the price trend and what is the competition of that particular product the overall risk ret and returns in the industries the opportunities to if to differentiate from other uh, companies so this is basically what we turn understand about the market attractiveness right when i come to the business or the competitive strength it is basically capable to how that how much it is capable is it capable enough to actually compete in the given market is it worth also or is it holding any any kind of a value that it is capable enough to go into the market and actually um, sell itself right the product it can determine by the factors with company itself such as its assets what are the assets of the company how much the company is going to be uh, implementing into the different aspects of its uh, branding or its market retention and everything right so it can be determined by the factors within the company itself such as assets and the holdings the share if it the company holds in the market the development of this share the position in the market the loyalty of the customers the brand its creativity in coming so basically if you talk about the business strength it goes to the detail right it just not it's not it just not take the outside like we have just taken about the uh, industry uh, attractiveness right so industry attractiveness take the outline of the framework of that market value it is going to hold right but here when i talk about business strength it goes into the depth right post and pre the product launch what is entire going to be all the aspect it is going to consider for itself what is going to be the risk analysis what is going to be the competitive advantage what is going to be the case of the situations of failure and everything right so those few every all the situations of the market are well considered in the business strength or the competitive strength factors that affect business strength include strength of assets and the competent sees relative brand strength market share and customer loyalty of course like i just told you it is in the context of the value of customers also so you are just not going to be taking into the uh, bigger picture you have to go into the detail here for the business and competitive strength now coming back to the diagram that we just had seen earlier so this is basically the diagram that we have right we have discussed why the medium aspect of nature is also considered here let's go to the actual ge9 cell matrix so if you see here students certain cells have been colored green certain cells have been colored yellow and certain cells have been considered red so if you go by the traffic signal method green is to go yellow is to hold and red is definitely to stop right so in context of the business strength and the industry effectiveness if a product is having any product 
is having high industry attractiveness and strong business strength it is definitely growing so it is into that zone the company is going to keep maintaining the uh, the uh, the market share it's going to keep uh, you know selling the product and the customers are going to buy subsequently when now the market attractiveness is high but the business strength goes to medium still the product is going to be into the growth stage right why because still it is going to be very much there it is going to be sold and it is going to be consumed again now if it has medium industry effectiveness but stronger business strength it is going to be in the growth stage right so this is basically the green cells where the product is going to be like there working smoothly right now when i come to the red part let before going to the yellow zone let's see the red cells when there is low market attractiveness but the unit strength or business strength is medium the product is going to be the in the harvest stage that means it is just in, in in aspect of the scrap so it is there is no the investment that is going to be done by the organization it is basically similar to the dog stage that we ha had the dog quadrant that we had in the bcg matrix so it is going to be almost coming to the end of its life cycle when the uh, business industry effectiveness is low as well as the business strength is also weak it again goes to the harvest stage or where it is going to almost be considered out of uh, you know the market value when the industry effectiveness is medium but the business strength is weak it is going to go to the harvest stage right there will be no production there will be no consumption so almost that stage it is going to be on the verge of coming completely unavailable now when we have let's go to the yellow cells or the yellow quadrants here yellow means that the product is not also growing and the product is not also coming uh, you know falling down in terms of its market value right so in this stage when the industry effectiveness is low but the business strength right in context of the entire customer value you know all those things are still strong so the product is going to the hold stage right so when it is going to go to the hold stage it is going to be having low industry attractiveness and it is going to be having low business high sorry business strong business strength now if it is having medium business strength as well as medium industry effectiveness it is still going to be into the hold stage right it might go to the growth stage or it might go to the harvest if it is in in those yellow aspect of consideration right if it is having less of industry attractiveness and having weak business strength still it is going to be into that hold situation where it is going to either go to the grow stage or the harvest stage depending upon the that particular scenario where it is considered right so this is how the entire b gec model of uh, portfolio analysis is considered please see the diagram and you can like just create a picture of how this is going to be there okay if you've seen the diagram let me just make you understand the concept of grow and the concept of <coughs> so harvest aspect of this is something that you have understood let me explain the grow 
and the whole stage for you. See, the grow stage, the green section here, it indicates that a product is very attractive right now into the market. It is very much in demand. And there is high competitive strength in comparison of to other companies that are sim selling the similar product. Your product is definitely holding a very strong value. So in this, this case, there is as much investment as much possible for the product line. You have to as much invest the kind of um, revenue as much the product has to be, uh, you know, progressed. So the growth stage is basically considered in that. When I talk about the whole, right? Whole, okay, so ju just don't take it in the way that, okay, ma'am told me the diagram was this way. So it is basically a mirror reflection. I have taken there earlier, it was from low, medium, high, and here I have taken the, so here it has taken in this aspect, right? So please don't get confused with that. Okay, so when it comes to this particular scenario of hold, the product is placed in the tempered market, right? It is neither completely scrapping out itself and it is not being the big player also. So here it is neither growing nor declining. Or it, the competitive strength is average. It is neutral. So what a business organization should, should do, not more, not less than your average competitors. So you have to be considering the market and then you don't have to now be completely go, you have to be very balanced in terms of the kind of investment you are going to do. It complete not com going to be completely high or completely low, right? So you have to understand that there is an average role you are playing right now here. So you have to play safe. So if you remember the diagram that we I just we had discussed in the beginning of today's session where I show you, showed you the uh, question paper. So for the 2018 particular question that we had, you can do a quick analysis of this aspect and you can answer this question. So when, when we will be doing the answer writing part, I'm going to, and we are, together actually are going to frame the answer for that. But you can, for the beginners, you can just start and try to, uh, after you've understood this concept, you can try to answer that question from your point of view. So the case study that I have taken for a GEC model, for the BCG we took the popular um, Google and the YouTube case study. For the GEC model, I have taken the example of the most popular company, Nestle. So for a GEC model, Nescafe has a lot of products right now into the market. The coffee, uh, you know, the popular, popular Nescafe coffee, the, the most popular Nescafe product is the coffee. So it is definitely into the growth stage. So Nestle introduced coffee into the Indian market, although there are other brands also coming up, but the kind of sales or the growth Nestle or the kind of hold Nestle coffee holds in the market is very, very much dominant. So for a GEC model, there is strong competitive advantage and there is strong attractiveness in consideration of the coffee industry. There is profitability, there is growth, there is market share, there is presence of entry barriers. So no, till today, there are other companies also selling products. There are international companies also who, which are now there in the market. But Nestle Cafe Coffee is still the, the most prominent one. Then Nescafe as a company, in consideration of the product like Bon Vita sold by uh, the company Cadbury, in similar like, uh, context, Nestle introduces the dr uh, energy drink for the kids that was Milo. So for the 90s kids uh, who would have uh, actually had it also, right? So for us, Milo was during our own school uh, days. So at that point in time, Milo in an Indian market consideration, it, it was on hold. It is still being sold in the other countries, but for, uh, especially for the Indian context, for the Indian uh, market industry, it is on hold. So the average competitive, there is average competitive advantage and there is at, the attractiveness is also very much balanced. Products like Milky Bar, we have several, uh, I, I would say chocolate bars that are being sold. So Nestle as a company has stopped the sale of the Milky, Ma Milky Bar. It is at the harvest uh, quadrant or the harvest cell. Why? Because here the industry strength is also low 
and here the i would say the business strength is also low and there in terms of industry attractiveness also it is low so harvest comes for the product like milky bar it has withdrawn its sale from the year 2020 it there are some um, you know hardly after 2 years also it, it after 3 years to be precise now also milky bar is just almost out of the market so definitely it is in the harvest stage so just see this diagram so that you can include that as your case study when you are uh, explaining the gec model and also like i told you when you are reading your newspapers also so think from a management optional student they might ask you in the interview also let's be very very realistic that when 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 you are going for the interview also they would ask you to do a quick quick portfolio analysis they might ask you as a management student that if you are in business organization or at an individual level which is the kind of product you relate to which model so you need to be very quick in answering that and you need to know that where the gec model is to be considered and where is the bcg matrix to be considered and these two case studies that i have included are very easy for you to understand so when when you are reading the newspaper also and you are when you are reading such news when or when you are reading about any uh, product uh, uh, strategy change so try to just resonate it with these uh, strategic tools what are the advantages and the disadvantages of the gec model students first it is definitely it makes it easier for a business organization to analyze a portfolio of the business unit to find out that which product needs more funding which needs less funding definitely the investment aspect is much more clearer here new products that should be added everything is decided here products or business units that need to be de in dis disinvested or divested so the product divested means which are to be har like harvested to be excluded completely it helps to raise awareness of the performance of the business unit so it basically helps create an awareness that what kind of the uh, the performance that particular business product is currently having the in terms of the comparison it assists in development of strategies to maximize the return on available resources the optimal utilization of resources is very required so gec model helps a lot here it identifies the strength and the weaknesses that we have done already understood is if you compare the bcg matrix and if you compare the gec model the there is a very 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 clear difference the strength and weaknesses can be easily easily be in detail understood here all right it provides information for the future market opportunities what are going to be the future and what are going to, even going to be the realistic approach that any business organization has going to consider because everybody has a like i just told you all the business organization or all the entrepreneurs have a long term vision so they don't have to be just relying on the particular product they have to be the key market players for all the products and make sure that they are performing like subsequently well no business organization wants its product to go into the harvest stage or the dive stage the disadvantage here definitely they are going to be there it is quite complicated and cumbersome for anybody who is let's say for a layman business like in 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 terms of a very general businessman who has not studied management or who has not have a good great idea about what are this portfolio analysis for him or her there is it becomes quite complicated and cumbersome right market attractiveness is difficult to determine market attractiveness is definitely a very kind of a framework that you are designing right so the aspect of market attractiveness cannot be understood easily by everybody it has to be a very strong expert a very a person who has very well versed with the changing environment so at that point in time market attractiveness has to be considered because it keeps it keeps on changing so this is something that is uh, there it can be difficult to determine a business unit strength and assign weight to its uh, uh, to its against industry attractiveness so sometimes it becomes for any business product it is difficult to determine that what is this product strength and just to in like align it to in consideration of the industry attractiveness so those two uh, viable uh, uh, aspect are very very difficult to portray a new business unit can can't be effectively portrayed in developing industry through this method 
so any business unit which is just being new to the market it cannot be very it can't be very effective in portraying what the developing the industry using just this method so this is what are the disadvantages of it when you are once you are writing the answers since it's uh, like i always tell you the presentation of your answers matters a lot keep all these points in your mind and keep very handy notes for them so when you, once you are doing the re-revisioning part you can just easily jot down those points and you can easily write it down in your paper because since the time is a constraint in your answer writing part so definitely keep these points in your mind now let me just compare the bcg matrix with the gec model i want you to understand the basic basic difference between them so that you can easily identify that for which company for which organization you have to uh, be they have to be or uh, you have to decide for the gec model or you have to decide for the bcg matrix so bcg matrix definitely has four cells or the four quadrants it has nine cells or the nine quadrants that's the basic difference the business unit relate rated against here it is market share the parameters and there is industry growth rate there we the parameters that we had were business strength and industry of attractiveness and you know the for the industry uh, attractiveness and for the business strength what are the sub parameters that th there are the matrix uses a single measure to access growth rate and market share but in gec model it uses multiple measures to access the business strength and the industry attractiveness the matrix uses only two types of cl classification that is high and that is low but for the business organization learning at a medium pace it is cons it considering the three type of classification high medium and low or we even call it strong average and weak okay it has definitely many limitations we have just seen all those things and all those limitations that were there in the bcg matrix have been overcome with the gec model and there is definitely improvement overall so please understand the basic difference between the two now um, there was another question from the previous year which was asked in the year 2022 which was regarding the turnaround strategy let me just explain that to you also after this uh, important models that we have or the tools that we have understood for the strategic portfolio analysis let's understand now what is turnaround strategy the turnaround strategy as the name itself suggests turn around there is a subsequent change in the strategy formulation because there has been certain aspects that are noticed which are not giving the positive outcomes as they were expected earlier so turn around strategy is a retrenchment strategy followed by an organization when it feels that decisions made earlier is wrong and it needs to be undone before it damages the port profitability of the company every business organization that is there in the market has a very i i would say a, a value in terms of the market reputation it is holding no business organization or no entrepreneur wants to go to that uh, black hole of being degraded in terms of its performance customer satisfaction or any kind of bad market right so to avoid the future damage and to avoid the future possibility of uh, loss every organization so one in one or the other way because let's say it's it is sometimes the if a business organization is taking a decision right now it might be not be very holding that much of value in the future because the like i just told you the market is dynamic the products are endless so there is definitely a turnaround strategy that is considered to avoid the damage from the for the which is going to hamper the company's reputation and the profitability simply turn around strategy is backing out or retreating from the decision wrongly made earlier and the transforming from a loss making companies to a profit making companies 
so like in the concept of organizational behavior that we will be studying a subject module you will be understanding also that there are several factors that affect the decision making also so here the turnaround strategy comes into the picture those uh, you know aspects would have made the company go to the peak of performance at that particular time but gradually it might have taken the company you know fall back in terms of the similar strategy or the similar action plan so the company or the business organization has to be quick in terms of turning back and restarting or reiterating the strategies right so this is what is turnaround strategy there are several factors that are considered you know which helps to understand that okay this is the time where the turnaround strategy has to be implemented the first point here is there is continuous loss the organization has been suffering loss and it has not been receiving as expected outcome as it was actually in the in when it was uh, when it initially launched the product then you have poor management the uh, business organization is managed by human resources right so there is poor management the management is not that much equipped or well uh, skilled enough to make the organization work smoothly and be very very tactful in terms of the decision making and the kind of performance of operations then wrong corporate strategies the real life and the boardroom discussions are very different so to have a very good corporate strategy there has to be a very experts which which have to be there which are formulating the strategy so once the there is a wrong strategy that has been observed from the boardroom itself from the upper uh, people in the hierarchy it falls down till the product is in the till the level the product is in the market in in, in consideration in, in in front of the customers then there is persistent negative cash flow all definitely there is cash flow but there is the cash flow is just going in consideration of not no uh, positivity it is just going in, in terms of expenditure only so definitely it is just all about negative cash flow there is no roi coming so in that situation there is high employee attrition rate that means a lot of employees are leaving the organization there is significant uh, withdrawals of employee from the organization so there is in that resignation uh, you know chain happening this is definitely a strategy turnaround point poor quality of functional management the organization's functionality is not that much effective and there is a poor there is no effectiveness there is no um, i would say good functional uh, aspect of its performance then is there is declining market share if you compare the product of that particular business organization with the similar kind of a product being uh, sold by another uh, um, uh, organization in the market the your uh, that particular organization is losing its market share right the competitive advantage is not maintained there is significant fall in that so in that case also it is considered then in the last point that i have included here is uncompetitive products and services the products are there but they are not they are so they are very on hold they are not even taking any direction they are not going to an absolute boom or they are not even falling back completely so in that kind of a situation where there is the competitive market is uncom the comp there is the products are uncompetitive they are just there so in that situation there is turnaround strategy followed so these are the major major eight points that you have to consider as a business organization for the turnaround strategy it also the need for turnaround strategy arises because of the changes in the external environment we so the uh, the aspects that we just considered in this slide or in this particular uh, factor of uh, recognition for a turnaround strategy these are related to the internal working of the organization right but you just cannot be talking about the business organization in terms of the internal aspect there has to be the world outside also because the product is basically like an interface between the internal functioning of an organization and the outside environment also so in that aspect there are external environment factors also like what are the current government policies how the government has been uh, Uh, assigning budget to that particular product in the market what are the saturated demand for the product is it still holding that kind of uh, uh, value in terms of the customers 
people might be switching to other products which they find much more easy and fancy to use so in that case also there are substitute products happening there is change in the taste of the customers right so this is also very much considered when you talk about the turnaround strategy also dell is a very beautiful example that you can quote here why because dell started you know uh, selling their products without any retailers so dell f had a very strong turnaround strategy in 2006 when it started the cost cutting measures and to do so it started selling its products directly there was no retailer so the value of dell started declining and unfortunately it suffered a huge loss and that point in time but quickly the second year dell rewired themselves they had a um, good uh, turnaround strategy and they went back to their old ways and dell reduced its direct selling strategy and started selling its computers through the retail companies right so this is how the dell adapted the turnaround strategy so this is going to be one of the best example you can quote for a turnaround strategy when it in terms of any company so also like i told you when you will be reading your current affairs make sure that you are noticing or you are highlighting those companies which are right now or which have in the past used the turnaround strategy so you need you have a good pool of examples to quote for the same now let me go to the experience curve that we also have in our syllabus let's understand that and that is going to be the end of the discussion for today okay the experience curve so any business organization once it has been into the market men, so many business organization are able to practically hold that kind of uh, strength or that kind of a standard it becomes in times of monotonous also for the business organization so they try to be little taking a you know they taking a step back and just uh, not being too much involved for any if you compare also the uh, the big players and the startups right the startups or the culture in the startup is more of like that they are always on the toes i'm not saying that the uh, like the big brands or the traditional companies are don't do anything in, on, on those lines they do but if you compare if if, if you visit or you have or ever seen those two uh, organizations working where if you have worked in the corporate so you can clearly see the diverse difference right so the experience curves say, states the it was introduced by the boston consultancy group it says that the ex, more experienced a company is the more time the company has been uh, selling the product been in the market knowing the pros and cons knowing the highs and lows the lower will be its cost of production it would be having the aspect of not investing too much in the production so the amount it is going to be investing for the production is definitely going to be less so more the uh, experience the company has been having in that market significantly there it will be having the low cost of production when the total production capacity doubles the value added cost declined by constant percentage the value added cost includes the cost of manufacturing marketing distribution administration so all those value of cost definitely there is kind of a permutation combination that is done by the business organization because they already know what their customer is expectancy how the market is going to change what are the factors what is the timeline of the product how the you know different different seasons affect the sales of the product so in that aspect the uh, the experience curve is considered let's see the diagram of the experience curve so here you can see the diagram for the vertical axis there is cost per unit and for the z x axis that have included you have cumulative value volume so as soon as the company has been there in the market the more the experience of the business organization the less is the cost the cost keeps on reducing as the company's experience or the uh, life time of the company's existence of for production has been increasing it comes down so this is what the experiential experience curve is there is a consistent relationship like i just told you between the production quantity of a company and the cost of production 
as it was included by Boston Consultancy Group, which we have already discussed. This was again introduced in the year 1970, and it states that the experience curve effect for various industry ranges between 10% to 25%. 25% is the extreme. Once a company reaches to that, it basically grows into the fact that, okay, this is going to be the how the cost of production is going to be just maintained. A company that benefits from the effects of an experience curve enjoys several advantages over its competitors. Because it is already there in the market, it knows the, all the details, so definitely it, is ha it has an upper edge over its other competitors. As the market grows and lowers its unit production cost, it will gain a bigger market share over its rivals. Right? As the business's organization is growing it, and the cost of production is definitely, it knows how to, the product is being made, how much investment they have to make, what all are the uh, adds on or the reductions that they have to make. So now they have a very good idea. So for any business organization which has just entered the market, if you compare the two, the strategically also, it is still going to be the uh, dominant one, right? Whereas the new arrival of the company, which is just coming, just recently joined the market, they are going to be very much calculative because they don't know the details that how this market is actually functioning. So still, they are going to have a good, uh, you know, uh, good, um, I would say, upper edge over their competitors. It means that it will control a bigger portion of the market and increase its profit potential. So definitely, it comes with the experience for sure. Now, for the limitations for the experience curve, I have included two major points. First is complacency. One of the criticism of the experience curve is that makes market leaders complacent by their achievements. So they already know that, okay, this is, they are very complacent with the fact that they know what are the grows and they know what are the glows of a product. So by getting the benefits of the experience curve effect, the companies become reluctant they are very much stagnated and they don't want to innovate. They are like, they are, go, they are going to use their old means, right? They are going to go to that traditional. If you, even if you, let's say, even if you go to a person who, um, who's, let's say, let's say somebody who's, uh, who's from older generation, they still would never prefer smartphones. But if you talk about any younger generation, they would be all hearts for a smartphone. So definitely the innovation part with time is goes to the very traditional values that the company is following. So they didn't want to be innovative or creative for that. They want to go by the old means. So because of their experience, there is inability to measure its effect. Another criticism for this experience curve is that there is inability to measure its effects. Like, most of the time, it affects are closely related to the economies of the scale, and it will be impossible to differentiate between the two. So definitely, there is inability to mention that how much effect it's going to be holding. So again, another disadvantage for the same. So just read this also. And economies of scale, basically, are the cost benefits gained due to an increased level of production Whereas experience curve effects are the cost benefits achieved through the experience by performing repetitive tasks. So these two parameters have to be taken into um, relative study. So definitely the cost benefits are considered here. Both the concepts are intertwined and it is difficult to differentiate between if, if the experience and increased level of production. So sometimes the line becomes very difficult that, okay, how the, the, the product is actually uh, lasting into the market. So it m becomes difficult to measure the cost benefits of each function. So this is, again, the second uh, limitation that we have just studied. Right. So with this, I come to the end of today's session. Um, we have studied BCG matrix, we have studied the GEC model, today we have studied the experience curve, we have also studied the turnaround strategy. These are uh, questions which are mostly uh, very, very, uh, like for right now, the ki kind of question that I expected from the manage management optional, they are very much there and they could be asked for your 2023 paper as well. So make sure that you know them, you go through the slides and you have a good idea about the same. And the answer writing part, once you are done with that, we are going to go ahead with that. Just make sure that you are, once you are reading the newspaper, you are keeping these aspects in mind that we have just studied, right? So thank you, everybody. Take care.